afternoon, everyone. It's an absolute pleasure to be here to talk about something that I am deeply passionate about. In the startup world, more so than anywhere else, I think today um, we suffer from extreme stress. One, we have to compete and sort of break out and, and achieve success, and there is stress associated with that. And then even if we make it, that making it process is also so all-consuming that there is stress associated with that. And what is the cause of this stress? Stress happens when outcome, when desired outcome doesn't meet the actual outcome. And so we are like this leaf in the wind that is dependent on outcomes that are not under our control. And because of those uncontrolled outcomes that don't go our way, there is stress. So it would be very hard to argue, I think most people in the room would agree with me, when I say that meditation as a stress management tool is very important. However, I would urge you to explore this tool or any other introspective tool in a much deeper way. Can this tool not be used just as, you know, a 30-minute tool that is like an exercise session? What if we can use this tool to change ourselves in fundamental ways? What if we can use this tool to influence outcomes and to influence others? And finally, what if this, we can use this tool to send ourselves on a journey of wonder that will add dimensions to our life? I would like to use my experience of 20 years of meditating to highlight some of the changes that I have seen and to highlight the need for an, in, or highlight what an introspective process can do for you. My journey began when I was a boy of 16 and it happened because of my father. My father was always concerned with, you know, life and the purpose of life and what happens after death, etc. And he has this whole library of books on parapsychology, and he was always seeking, 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 seeking. And then he read that anybody who had achieved enlightenment had done it through meditation. So he wanted to learn meditation. At that time, Art of Living was, was very famous. This was the early 90s. And so we asked our office, is there you know, an Art of Living center in Ahmedabad? It happened that there wasn't, but the office came back saying that there is this institute called Heartfulness, the Heartfulness Way, where there's the Heartfulness Meditation. And that first meditation of his was almost life-changing. And then over a six to eight month period, both my brother and I saw the changes that happened in him. And it prompted us, without asking or without being prompted by anybody, to, to join ourselves. At first, it was, you know, struggling with the practice. But over a period of time, I started to see some tendencies change. Anger, frustration, etc. go away. The second thing that I observed is that through this practice, I had a sort of pause button on reaction. I think most interpersonal reactions or most personal interactions, interpersonal interactions, go negative because of uncontrolled reaction. So if you can pause, think, and be centered within oneself, it helps interpersonal interactions. That's the second thing I observed. The third thing I observed was that there is a whole wealth of resources within me that I had no idea existed before. 
And that wealth of resources has nothing to do with the rational. We have, you know, uh, we, ha we place such a huge premium on rationality as society, and for good reason. I mean, rationality helps you navigate through, through life. However, most of our most important decisions are not rational. Love, marriage, how we deal with our children, how we succumb to their demands, even though we know that it's not good for them. There are other forces that operate in this world. And if we can look within ourselves, tap into some of those forces and use them as resources, for example, intuition. Most scientific di discoveries of any earth-shattering proportions have come through intuition and not, and then a rational process is applied after, thereafter to figure out, you know, to explain those, those intuitions to the world. So how do we tap this intuition? How do we tap the other resources that we have at our disposal? I think an introspective process helped me do that and to make that connection between mind and heart and use them seamlessly to put through all your decisions through that lens of other resources available to you and make better de decisions. I think that's something that started to happen along the way. But the final aha, and I wish I had learned this earlier, was that it is, meditation is not just a process in isolation. In fact, the, the amount of time you spend meditating is the least important part of meditation. Each time one meditates, one is bestowed with, you know, a feeling, a vibratory level, a condition that one can keep oneself, keep, keep with oneself. It's like the shirt you put on in the morning but forget about, but, but it's there. And then you can learn to use it. And then once you learn to use it, you can learn to influence others through, your, through change in your own behavior, through change in your own attitudes, by staying connected to that vibratory level. You can become more compassionate, you can become more empath, you, you have a high, heightened sense of empathy. You learn to deal, failure, deal with failure much better. And then you get this invaluable gift that gives you a sense of inner well-being that is not linked to outcome. So once you can de-link that linkage with outcome, your life becomes very, very easy. And the final thing, that I learned was that the reverse started happening. That the place of work became, a, became an instrument to improve my meditation, to improve my condition. And so it became this self-fulfilling loop. So how can you use your work to improve meditation? So then that compartmentalization that this is spirituality, this is meditation, and this is work, that distinction disappears. So what does one need to you know, follow, follow this process? I'm not advocating any specific. The one that I know is heartfulness and it's changed the life, my life, my family's life, and I couldn't recommend it more. But each one of us has to find oneself for oneself, an introspective process that one presupposes nothing. We are working on ourselves, and the result of that work is the change we see in ourselves, with no preconceived notion. I think a method like that helps. Number two, this entire compartmentalization. It, it should work in today's world. It should not, it should not and, and the work that we do must reinforce it. And three, it must be freely available and there must be support and guidance to take you through the various steps. If you can find something like that, then I think the journey becomes that much easier. My journey has been extraordinary and wonderful, and I would love to share with you, um, there is a booth of, uh, on heartfulness uh, somewhere in, uh, in, in, in here that you can all, all uh, explore. 
and would love to interact uh, over tea and, and have some questions if anybody has anything. So thank you for, for inviting me here and, and sharing my experience on, on meditation and an and introspective process. Thank you.